Namaste. I'm Dr. Robert. And today on Five-ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, my subject is surrendering. And by surrendering, I do not mean being in charge of a large army and putting down weapons. By surrendering, I mean taking the army of all the thoughts that you have on the inside and the ego that is the uh, field marshal of this army and surrendering them to reality in the sense, in particular in the sense of making you less the doer of everything in your world. Yes, you are doing things. Yes, it's you are here because you have done things in the past. As a result of those things you did in the past, identifying yourself as the doer, you are now experiencing the result of those karmas in the present. Now is a good time not to create a bunch more karmas, identifying yourself as the doer, either in the good sense or in the not so good sense. In the good sense, you will think of yourself as the doer when you think you achieve something and you think, I have achieved it, I have done this, this is all because of me. No one else would have been able to do it, I did it, but I did it, and it is all about me. When in fact, it is not all about you. You had help, whether you had help in the past to allow you to get to this point, or you had help in the future to assist you to actually achieve what you did, help did occur, it was not all about you. And similarly, if you fail and you say to yourself, I am stupid, I am useless, I suck, everything is terrible, all about me, it's in fact not all about you. Part of it has to do with the time, it may not be the right time for something. Part of it has to do with the way that you tried to do it. Part of it may have to do with your attitude. Part of it may be that you're not supposed to be trying to do that. There may be all kinds of things that you will not be able to see if you're focused only on how pitiful you are. So this is why, of course, um, the <clears throat> best way to try to address the ego is to make the ego bow down. The ego always wants to put its head up and strut around and explain how great it is. It's much better to have the ego bow down and surrender to reality. You can surrender to a guru, to a deity. You can surrender to a mountain. You can surrender to a tree. It's not uh, about specifically what it is. It's a, whatever it is you surrender to is symbolic of surrendering to reality, to that supreme reality that is actually doing things. Um, in Sanskrit, there are a couple of words for surrender. One is prapanna or prapatti. Another one is sharana. Prapanna or prapatti literally means to fall at the feet of. And if you fall at the feet of, that means that your head has gone down to the feet of, whatever it is you're falling at the feet of, and that means you are abasing your ego. And sharana means to take refuge. So taking refuge means you come to some person, place, or thing, and you say, um, I, I acknowledge that I am not in charge of myself in the complete and total way in which I may have thought that I was. I am taking refuge with you, the Supreme Reality, I'm requesting you to direct my steps and um, however that happens, in whatever way it is, first of all, fundamentally, I want you to direct my steps and then it becomes a way in which you are doing your best to listen carefully to inspiration that is coming from that supreme reality and you're able to listen to it because you have your head firmly wedged down at the feet of reality, and therefore it is much easier to listen instead of when you have your head up, you're strutting around, you're listening to the voice inside your head, and you uh, could not um, uh, identify reality if it came up and punched you in the face, which it will often tend to do if you are strutting around with your ego in an uncontrolled fashion. This is Dr. Robert requesting everyone to live a life of surrender to reality.